Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the show all about upcoming third-person MOBAs. And we do this every week. We do. We try to do this every week. We kind of missed the last two weeks, but not a, not a lot went on. Not a lot went on during those two weeks, so I don't feel too bad about it. So uh, we're going to go over the different updates for Overprime, Fall Predecessor, and Ethereal, and then we're going to talk about whatever topic of discussion comes to us. I think what we're going to talk about is, like, reasonable. Like, I want to have just a frank, very, very honest con con conversation about how how can, can we really expect these to to, to succeed um because i'm starting to think maybe no but anyway uh i am your host the mangoose joining me as always is my friend and co-host jelly knees how you doing jelly i am fantastic mangoose other than vikings trying to steal my shoulder thing that i do literally every episode and so he's doing the shoulders at the intro that's not acceptable Un unacceptable but with us this week as i already said we've got viking back with us welcome back viking jedi how are you doing I'm doing doing great. I didn't realize that that was a thing that you did. I just saw no, you doing it, is, it this okay? time, and Mangus I was like, got the bobblehead. I got the shoulders right <laughs> oh, okay. between the two of us. We're a dynamic duo, okay? Oh uh, yeah, you guys are a hard. Force, from, though. Yeah, <laughs> get your own thing. Get your own thing, Jedi. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know how to do my own thing. No, uh, no I'm doing good though. Thank you guys. You're obviously doing good. You feel like you're on cloud nine right now. I but do I'm feel saying, like it. Uh, <laughs> Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, by the way. Not a sponsor. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Let's. Oh, well, Jedi, you played Paragon, right? Um, pe you've been on the show before. People really enjoyed your last appearance on FTM. <laughs> I don't know why. I have no idea why. Because we've been hanging around a lot. And, man, you are just the worst. The absolute worst. But people like Thank you for some reason. I, I, yeah, I don't understand it either. I'm probably one of the most self-deprecating people out there. So, uh, no, I, I, I did play Paragon way back in the day. I, the only thing I can think of of why maybe people like me is that I'm just maybe, um, you know, a little bit of a, a different point of view, more of a, you know, casual kind of looking from the outside in viewer maybe. And so that they resonated with that. I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy they like me. I'm happy to be back and uh, hopefully they enjoy my commentary again today. It could just be like a Hunchback of Notre Dame thing, like the <laughs> the Feast of Fools, where we bring in Viking so that everyone has someone to make fun of, right? Like, oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm used to that, too. I'm used to that, too. Especially gaming with oh, you. Shit. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's been a good time gaming. It's been a good time gaming with you guys. But um, oh, yeah. let, let's move on to these updates here. Uh, I'm sure. just going to go in order of how I have them on the sheet. Uh, Over Prime. Um, a while back, they had an interview with the music composer that did, did the music for their game, and uh, I remember thinking, like, "Hey, that music's pretty good." But like, when I re well, like I watched this and then really went back and really listened to it, and holy mm. shit, it's really, really well done. Like, mm -hmm. it's to the caliber that it'll be memorable. It'll, it's. I don't think it's. I don't think anything will ever top adrenaline for me, as far as like whenever I think Paragon, I think adrenaline. But um, I think this has potential to be that song for uh for overprime um did you guys catch that interview at all i did yeah I, I did not i didn't i didn't hear but i did enjoy the music a lot uh what was what was the interview about it was pretty basic like where did you get your inspiration and like how did you do all this stuff i guess he's like he's a pretty famous game music guy i don't know but uh yeah just, just talking about you know everything i the actual interview seemed a little generic to me. Like, he was like, well, it, it needs to be epic. And it's like stuff that describes like any game. <laughs> Exciting <laughs> and think, epic. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it felt kind of general. It felt like before, instead of the way, I think maybe that was the way it was cut too. Mm. Is it was like, it popped a question on screen of like, what gave you the inspiration for Overprime? And then he would give a very general answer and not like a specific, like in Overprime, I thought about cult and with cult be like being a super rootin' tootin' gun guy right that we designed the theme around that like it didn't there was no specifics it was very general a lot it's, of the interview so does it did it give you like uh like the idea that maybe he didn't know what it was that he was making it for <laughs> and they were just like like hey we need you to make a score for this game and and then he made the score and then the now they're like oh interview about that oh yeah it was <laughs> He was yeah, like, I when I was doing the music for Over Prime, the, 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 <laughs> my, <laughs> there's an aspect that it almost felt like that. that it was, <laughs> he's like looking at the sheet, like, what game is this for? Uh, Over Prime? 
No, he he did say we're we're making fun of this fucking interview like crazy now, and I don't know why because it wasn't bad. But like he did say that like um Soli worked really well with him and provided him plenty of like background lore and like um videos and pictures and stuff for him to like gather his inspiration from. But again, like the inspiration that he listed seemed like it could just apply to pretty much any game. But yeah, the music's good. He did a great job mm-hmm. with it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like the music in game. It felt like epic, you know, being generic. It did, though. I mean, it was what you would want um, in moments of you know having things happen. The sound in general, I felt like in the game was really good, so um, they meshed well with the music. I think the one that like sticks out to me, one their their main theme, like when you're on the main menu. But the thing that I can remember more is the prime dunk theme that when prime spawns and is charging down the lane oh, you get yes. the like rums it's like oh yeah like what are we doing i'm in where are we going <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah that's... you say that's true that's it was huge right like it felt mm-hmm. like that like you were like oh we gotta keep going like you you, you and, and if it dropped as an enemy like or if you were the enemy that it got dropped on like you felt like that sudden urge to be proactive to to defend your base that's a really good point and even think about that I definitely noticed the first time that a dunk dropped too. I was like, "Whoa, whoa, what is this music?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that was a good feeling for sure. Um, oh. see, other stuff for Overprime. They got new skins. Um, they got a concept skin for Severog and a concept skin for Rampage. Both of them, of course, look really good. These are not three D modeled, but we've seen in the past that like we saw a concept skin for Phase, and then two weeks later they had the full skin made and in game. So it's when we see con like when I see concept skins from other games, like I'm a little less excited about it than with Overprime because I know that they're going to make that and they're going to make it f- make it fast. Yeah, and for those Overprime players in the audience, that is Demorius and Tarek because oh, yeah, Mangus bad. refuses to use their actual <laughs> names. Okay, get it right, Mangus. I think when we were doing the the play, he would like bounce between the different <laughs> names as we were doing it, and I would get confused, and I would be like, "Wait, which one is what?" And he'd be like, "Big swingy, you know, hammer guy or whatever." Oh, okay, that one. Yeah, no, uh, the skins look really, really cool. I'm assuming that Mangus is gonna put it in where you guys can see them on the screen or something like oh, that. No, oh, no. you won't. Oh, you won't. Okay, well, I was going to, but now to make you look stupid, Leave I'm it to not. <laughs> Uh, the Severog skin to me just looks. I mean, the, the, they were already good in in game. Uh, the, the, I thought that they had nailed the feeling that I expect for Severog. Um, but this one, uh, it looks really, really cool. I, I, I mean, we can't play it, but I can't wait to see it. Like it, it looks good. It feels very like Angel of Death esque to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's that Grim Reaper Angel of Death cross that, and it just looks so good. Like this. It does. He's already got the gold skin that looks really good, but I'd probably mm-hmm. play this one over that one every time. Just like that's it's so good. Yeah. The, I'm always a fan too when you have to struggle between like picking a skin on oh like God, you're yeah. loading into the game and you're like, oh, which what, what am I feeling? And if you for me, it's like if you capture a vibe, like if I'm feeling like, you know, goofy or, you know, kind of like troll like, you know, like, oh, OK, I'm going to pick this skin that's like, you know, really silly or but I'm like, you know, what, I'm just I'm feeling sweaty. I want the sweatiest skin I can get into. <laughs> uh, and and I think that they've they've done a decent job, not necessarily with Severog skins. I think all of his are kind of edgy and cool in that regard. But like, I, I do want to see more of that, like, you know, where you get to capture how you're feeling and in essence, because, you know, your skin is your representation in game outside of just the champion itself. And so uh, I like to see that they're expanding and coming up with, you know, new and cool ideas that, that you know, capture that feeling. The Terex skin was really cool, too. It mm-hmm. looks sort of mechanical. It looked kind of, um, I don't know, it did look full robotic, but it looked really, really cool. It fits. So it's similar in design to the cult skin that we have as well that like that mecha cult skin mm. the design aspects are very very similar so i wonder if that's a skin line that they're going for that they're going to design a whole group or everybody's going to get one of these mecha skins because it's got those the kind of the chest piece that's there the glow is very similar in a lot of aspects I, i'm a huge fan of this skin Ooh, yeah. I, re- I really want mecha fade because that makes zero sense <laughs> and i love it <laughs> like uh, the nature it, pixie girl it's uh, it also, to me, it looked like a like a Destiny Two monster uh, when I first saw it, and I, not that it's a dig, by the way. I think it, it's it's he just looks imposing and cool, and like you said, that I didn't really put the two skin types together, but I could definitely see it um, matching that that cold skin, and I would be 
full on board with like a skin line that kind of matches across the board. Um, well, I, I think that would be neat. Something that could be cool that they might be doing is that this is kind of the anti color scheme of the cult skin. So they could be doing that like white and purple color scheme for one side and then this mm. black, gold and blue for the mm. other side mm. and have the same skin line, but two factions in that skin line. Like we oh, should have like cool. League of Legends or other other MOBAs do the same thing where you have opposing skin lines, opposing factions in the same skin line, rather. I, I think that's a great idea and I'm all for that. It kind of dawned on me when you said he looks like a Destiny 2 monster. He looks like a grunt from the original Halo. Yeah, there you go. Same, yeah, kind of uh, art style. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and he looks badass. And that's it for Prime Overprime, unless you guys had any uh, had anything else. Nope. Another playtest win? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I keep, like, pulling it up on Steam and clicking on it and being like, oh, is there any announcement? Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I was looking at uh, same kind of concept. I was looking at Steam charts earlier randomly, and uh, I saw that there was like one player on there, and I was like, "What is that? What is, did one guy try and like log on <laughs> and just and just got to like the 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 loading screen or whatever, and then it says servers are down? Like some random dude decided to click on it today. <laughs> like but he just I happened mean, to get in while they were working on something. That would be hilarious. oh, that would be funny. Yeah, I mean, it, maybe like you just wanted to watch like, the trailer. Like, God. Whoever has the most hours in Overprime on Steam, and everyone's just going to be sitting in the load screen just waiting. <laughs> God. Oh, oh. oh, Gotta, oh, oh no. The kitty. Cat walking on the keyboard. Uh, That's about it for Overprime, unless you guys had anything else. Nope. Um, Let's move on to, well, Ethereal got nothing. We'll, we'll save them for the last. Uh, <laughs> fault. Um, They had a patch 16.2. They introduced um, even more optimization, which the last, like, I don't know, three, four patches they've done have been optimi- been optimization patches. Um, mm-hmm. A new history tab that shows you, like, everything that, like, your your last games, like your stats and everything, which is really cool, something they didn't have before. Uh, a few new items and some balance and bug fixes. Um, so, yeah, Fault's been pretty consistently pumping out more and more items, uh, better and better optimization. And then um, this history tab, which uh, Fault is far more complete as far as, like, aspects of a game that you would expect in a complete game than any of the other ones. Uh, however, I, I I haven't touched Fault, like, for, like, two weeks. And talking to a lot of my friends and looking at Steam charts, it seems like nobody has really touched Fault <laughs> for the past two weeks. I don't know what happened. Um, it's not that bad of a game. I was having fun playing it before. I just have not felt like playing Fault for a little bit, even even after this patch. I think it's hard because Fault has also not done anything to like try and bring people in for any reason necessarily. Mm-hmm. They haven't there's been no new character. This this patch went out, but the patch really doesn't do much in terms of like exciting reasons to play again. Uh and so it's I guess kind of falling stagnant for a lot of people because I've I've felt the same way. There've been several times especially since the Overprime test that I've like looked at Fault and been like maybe I'll play a game or two of Fault and I just like don't have i don't have just enough push <laughs> to get, actually start the game yeah. right like it's just i'm just on this side of the line um and so i think for at least myself and i may probably other people as well just something to engage people something to bring them back in just to push people back over that line could be super useful for them i mean i was excited to see in this patch we built the foundation for implementing skins with their own VFX and sound effects because Mangus, we talked about oh, that yeah, yeah. weeks and weeks and weeks ago about how specifically the Summer Fun Twin Blast doesn't have water pistols. Right? It's like <laughs> you could just make them blue and put them in there. Like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. so the little things, I think that's a little thing that goes a long way when you make Summer Fun Twin Blast have water pistols instead of his regular guns. And I think eventually they'll start marketing Fault a little harder and trying to actually get it into people's hands, get people get some noticeability of it. Because I mean, like as everybody says, and as we've all said, um, that, that's their biggest problem is just a really low player base, and mm-hmm. all the players that play it play it religiously. So when you do try and get in there, you're playing against people that know all the ins and outs of the game, and every bug, and every exploit, and every this and that, and you just get demolished in a way that you don't even learn from it and that's that's a feels bad right there mm-hmm. um yeah uh that's all that's all i had for fault unless you guys had anything else nope 
Um, not, I mean, not really. I haven't played it since I don't even know how long ago. I, I looked at, again, same thing I think, Mangus, you just mentioned. Like, there's not really a lot of people playing. I looked at Steam charts after this patch thinking, oh, maybe it'll, you know, bump it up a little bit. Literally, it's like the same. It's like 150 yeah. people consistently a day playing it. And um, to your exact point, like, if if I'm thinking about trying it and I want to go and I, and I download the game, and I get in, and the 150 people that I'm going up against consistently are all people who have been playing it since day one, super sweaty, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, and you're just getting, you know, Goomba stomped. You're uninstalling that thing right away. You're just like, nope, I'm over it. I don't need to. Um, I, 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 yeah, I honestly don't know what they, 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 they can do to really crack into a new player base. My only maybe suggestion, and that's if a dev is even watching, uh, would be to add in a more, like, fun to play mode like something that kind of intros people into the mechanics of the games and the champions like you know like a league of legends arum almost you know where you get like an arena mode for smite you know something where people who are a little bit more casual can get in there's not as much sweaty aspects to it games will last 15 to 20 minutes instead of 30 to 45 minutes you know get you familiar with items and and the different champions maybe that'll help introduce new players but i think with its current standing i mean Outside of the top three MOBAs in general, just it's already really hard to keep players, you know, coming in. So uh, I don't know what they're going to have to do to, to to garner new attention. I think something like an A ray mode is a great idea, even if it isn't balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, just a for fun thing where people can get in, play play for like ten minutes, and then you know, play a couple ten minute games and then get out. I think that would bring that would bring a lot of people in. I think. I mean, I know for me, uh, and Jelly can attest to this, sometimes when I'm not sure what I'll want to play, I'll boot up League of Legends, and I'll be like, I'll just play a couple of games of Aram. Literally, after those like two or three games of Aram, I'm like, ooh, I got the itch. Yeah. Let's play. <laughs> you know? and Let's cause it, it really, it, Yeah, because it, it brings it back to you. You start to feel like you know the groove of it. You get familiar with maybe any new champions that have come out. Um, Now, League is obviously far and be a, a, above like the biggest of them right they have a, a lot more resources to be able to commit to teams to doing that and i get that fault maybe doesn't have that same capacity but i just yeah i don't know because again i was looking at, at charts and it's like you know so league of legends is by far the biggest moba second is dota and then and we're talking third place but very very far down third place is smite and smite has like a concurrent of like ten thousand players league of legends in an example has like 2.5 million you know, a, a day, a day playing. That's a small country. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like playing League of Legends. That's this is worldwide. Yeah, you know what I mean, though? Like, it, it, so like when I start thinking about like, you know, these guys uh, and I, I'm hopefully not taking us too off track. But when I think about like a game like Fault or uh, or um, Over Prime or any of these ones that are trying to to come into this space, it's like, how do you really crack into where even Smite, which is a lot more established third person MOBA at this point with a lot of backings and a lot of, you know, interest. It's still only garnering, you know, twenty thousand players a day. That's it. It it, 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 it seems gloom, and to say the least, you know, I, I don't know what they have to do. I, I I don't know. I hope someone figures it out though, because I, I would love to play one. I think Sorry. that's kind of yeah. That's kind of the goal though, is to 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 get to where Smite is, not a, not not to get where League of Legends is. They're not they're never going to topple League of Legends mm. or Dota. Unless yeah. something fucking crazy wild happens, but you know. Yeah. Well, let's. Well, oh, go, what? what? Well, I was what? gonna say, uh, t- t- kind of like Heroes of the Storm gave them a run, right? Like Heroes of the Storm. Now, granted, it's Blizzard, so another huge company with a lot more, you know, inbuilt, uh, you know, players. But Heroes of the Storm got really popular, and I think was running up against Dota numbers pretty close. I think in its prime. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it, it, it totally different concept, but I, that was just going to be your, my, my small counter to, yeah, challenging the top three. I don't know who could. Yeah. Blizzard got screwed the pooch on that one, but oh well. Uh, well, let's move on to uh predecessor. Um, only really one change. Um, and I don't know why they did this. They changed their core design. They put it up on a uh, Twitter. Um, it's now just like a, like a pyramid, um, pretty, that pretty standard for uh Paragon to have the, the pyramid with a little stuff kind of floating around it. Uh I I hate that we always seem to be speaking negatively of predecessor on this show. However, why the fuck did they change it? Their core was awesome. They used to like their core used to be like this weird geode looking thing that was just 
really unique to predecessor, really well done. And it was, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved their core. I don't know why they changed it to this generic pyramid. Uh, Jelly, I know you got some thoughts. <laughs> you're, you're known as the... I love this new pyramid, Mangoose. I think it's the greatest thing predecessor has ever put in this game. Okay, good. Um, I think it's absolutely a valid change. You're insane for not liking it. And that's all I got to say about that. So uh, you think they're gone? You think they, they've gotten off my back now? Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're off your back. <laughs> Appealing to the, the predecessor uh, no, fanboys. I, <laughs> I mean, Mangus, I sent it to you going like, what? What was yeah. this? What is this? Because I completely agree with you. This feels like a really generic change that was unnecessary. Uh, especially that shape, that pyramid shape, is was like the buff shape for river buffs in paragon and then it was also in fault it's also one of the the shrine buffs yeah is that shape and so to me it's a weird comparison to make it the core now when they had a unique core prior a really good looking like core it was reminding me of something else so it was it was its own entity and it should be being the final thing you're trying to yeah. destroy it should feel unique and so it, it feels generic. It feels like a weird change. I hope they change it back. <laughs> um, yeah. Fucking, yeah, I don't understand, too. Like, like you look at that tweet, and people are, like, ooh and all, and I'm like, I, I know it's subjective. I know it's subjective. I know that, like, 100%. maybe people do prefer that pyramid. I just personally don't see how you would prefer that pyramid over what they had before. What they had before was amazing. Um, it... It feels like Smokey could take a shit in a Ziploc bag, take a picture of it, post it on Twitter, and say, new hero. And people would be like, yes, predecessor! It's like, no! Fucking, like, I don't know why I don't know why people like that. Um, they had such a nice core before. It's a shame. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. 100%. I don't think it's that bad, guys, to be it's, honest. No, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's, it's not just not as good as what they used to have. Yep. That, I completely agree. It felt like an unneeded change. Yeah. Why Why did we spend time on this instead of something else? I, I just I mean, really liked their core before. I thought that was one of the best parts of Predecessor was that really unique, very cool core design. And they went so generic with it. I don't understand. I don't get I mean, it. People seem to like it. I'm not going to lie. That's what they do. That's what I'm saying. That's what why? Thing is that why you, do they like that? Say anything at this point and the, the Pred fanboys out there will lose their minds. Well, so wait, did you guys already talk about this? They have, and maybe you guys have, and I don't know, but uh, one of their tweets in a reply was that they will have early access by the end of the year. Yeah, they've said that. A couple they times. have? Oh, okay. Yeah. So that could mean anything. Got it. Sorry, I'm just quickly reading through some of these tweets because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny seeing, like, so of all the things, like, as I continue to learn more and as you guys have um, influenced me, the predecessor fanboys are by far the strongest uh, voices. They, 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 I don't know if that necessarily means a good or bad game, but they definitely are the most active. Like, I mean, I'm talking about even on like, um, I was watching some random TikTok, and I think they were talking about, um, you know, the Paragon successors. It was just some random creator. I don't even know how I got onto this, but he mentioned the three, and literally, like, I want to say it was probably like 400 comments, and like 90% of them were all predecessor, predecessor, predecessor. It's like I feel like they have like an army of like bots yeah, responding to well, anything really. It's to. because it's because they have the best one though, for real. Like out yeah. of all three games, predecessor has been by far my most my favorite to play. Yeah, but like even even with that said, like I know I can identify that there are things wrong with predecessor. I can look at predecessor and point out bad things, but they have such the the community is just such overwhelmingly white knights. And the other problem too is I know it's the same community that were cheering for fault while while nobody was paying attention to predecessor. And I was like, guys, core is not going to be cool. Predecessor is They're like, oh fuck you, core football player, blah blah blah. And then when core went away, it was fault. And everybody was like, oh, Fault's the next big thing. Fault's going to be it. I'm like, what about Predecessor? They're like, fuck you. Who, what's Predecessor? It's never going to come out. Fault, 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 Fault. And now, it's these same exact people have moved on from Fault are and are, are now Predecessor, Predecessor, Predecessor. And that's kind of what annoys annoys me. It's like when Metallica got really popular in the 90s. And I like like got my everybody in my high school is like, oh, Metallica. I'm like, fuck you. You didn't like him before. I always liked Metallica, you 
asshole. All right, so Mangus was a hipster in the nineties. Apparently, yeah, is what yeah. we're finding out now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I know. I am right there with you, Mangus. And the, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword to have a community like that, as shown with Core and Fault. Accordingly, right? Is just as quickly as they are to defend you, they will be just as fast to dump you if you turn on them. For yeah, any reason. Yeah. And that's that's a terrifying thing to have, right? It, it's a great weapon, but it can be used against you really, really fast. Uh, and I, the thing I keep coming back to is we don't know what their monetization scheme is. And mm. that, they, that think? I think, is the thing that could make or break that community so fast. Because false monetization, when it first came out, people were pissed. Yeah. And so if Pred has that or worse, it could easily go downhill for them. They keep saying that's going to be free to play. Um but I mean, that even scares me skin. more, to be honest. At this point, I mean, maybe I'm like a weird old school kind of gamer, but when I hear free to play, I'm always immediately going like, okay, what kind of crazy microtransactions are you going to throw into this game? How many currencies am I going to need to keep track of? Like, how much am I actually going to be able to like earn or feel like I'm, you know, gain some kind of prestige in your game if it's free to play or whatever? At this point, to be honest, maybe I'm again weird and people in the comments can flame me. I'd rather spend 40 bucks on a game and just have it be the game. Like, just give me 40 bucks. And if you want to have like, you know, a, a battle pass or some other way to continue to gain like, you know, at revenue or whatever, fine. I'm fine with that. Like, but I'm tired of like insane microtransactions. I'm tired of like nickel and diming me to buy your currencies or, and you know, but you have to buy like, you can't buy the $5 currency because it's, you know, 30 crystals too short. So you have to buy the $10, but then you know, your leftover crystals aren't enough to be able to buy a different skin with it. So now you have these 640 crystals that you have nothing to do with. So you have to buy another $5. I hate it. I hate it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like, if, if they go free to play, that's fine. They better have a really good monetization like Jelly is saying, but like, and, and but this applies to any of the games. Like it, it doesn't matter. I I'm I'm of the, I have the money. It's not about the money. I just am also not dumb. I'm not gonna sit here and be fleeced by a a game company for for no reason for digital assets. I'm just not interested. You know. I I just I don't know, man. Maybe I'm really grumpy about it. But like I just <laughs> I can't stand that stuff, man. I'm tired of it. I mean, Pred has the investors that they could go free to play and um not have too many microtransactions and try and just sell skins if they can just if they can get all their money by selling cosmetics then more power to them yeah that's fine and i hope that's i hope that's what happens <laughs> um cool okay um uh, that's all i had for predecessor was just that core design change you guys have anything else nope. all no, right sir. let's move on to the topic of discussion which is a uh, you know reasonable chance of success for these games and, uh, yeah, I'm starting to think it's too late. I'm starting to think they took too long because, I mean, you see it. I think my channel is the perfect example. I've got, what, 12,000 subscribers. It's rare that I get over 1,500 views on a video, even though I have 12,000 subscribers. And it's because people float in. They're like, oh, Paragon stuff. There's a new Paragon. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And then they just kind of fade away when it doesn't as, hasn't come out in like six months. So that's mm -hmm. like, so they subscribe, but then they never unsubscribe. And that, so that's what's going on with my channel. And I think that's very indicative of what's been going on with these games. People get a little excited about it. They fanboy about it a little bit. And then they kind of just move on when it, when nothing has happened in forever. And stuff has finally happened. And you got Fault that's been out for like two years now. But still, it's I, th I, th I think it's just too late. I think it's just too mm -hmm. late. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm with you, Mangoose. I think... And there's a, a small amount of bias on this for sure. But I, I truly believe that of the four that we talk about consistently, Ethereal has the best chance because it's not Paragon. It's not it's not associated in any way. And I don't mean that as, as progress up till now. I just mean in general, looking at it from the outside, do you want new IP or old IP, right? What happened with the old IP that we're bringing it back? And that will always linger in the back of people's minds to an extent, and we've talked about that with all of these games, is at what point do they actually separate themselves from Paragon? Right. right. Overprime's gone balls to the walls in that regard, but Predecessor is following very closely in Paragon's footsteps. And so, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? And it's it's a hard thing either way, and it could easily go to their detriment. It could swing good at first, 
and then swing bad later on because they're so much like Paragon. Because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Paragon, aside from the Tencent and Epic, heads of Epic reasons, Paragon was a declining player base for a while before it died. And so it's hard. It's it's That's a realization that people have to remember. It wasn't just, oh yeah, everyone, millions of players are playing the game all the time and then they suddenly randomly turned off the servers. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. That's not what happened. And so it's hard for that. And so I, I think of them being just concepts, Ethereal has the best chance being something different and new, but they're all going to struggle. I mean, even going back to what Viking was saying earlier, when you look at Smite having being in the third place of MOBAs, right, that people know about and people recognize, have name recognition of, but it's such a distant third place that it may as well be 10th place, right? Like in comparison to the the big two being Dota and League, right? That's a hard wall to crack. I mean, and, and I mean, I, we've all, I think, talked about this in length at this point, but I, I, I mean, Smite is not a bad attainable, right? Like, it, Smite is, is doing fine. Like, they're they're making money off of Smite, right? And, and having 20,000, you know, concurrent players and a loyal concurrent, like, it's it's pretty consistent. Like, they they don't really drop, and they might have, like, a big spike after, like, a major release or something like that, right? People coming back and playing the game. But, um, I, I, yeah, I almost kind of agree that it might be, too little too late like that i think that's the big one for me is it's just like paragon while it was cool it was a really good idea it failed to stay relevant and i think the reason why it failed to stay relevant is something that you guys have you know we've all i think talked about and beat to to death at this point it's a multitude of things you know being able to just not keep a, a consistent player base active and interested in the game um, and a lot of that could be with, you know, the game's mechanics and, you know, monetization and, and you know, um, the barrier of entry for new players of struggling. Because, I mean, let's be honest, League and Dota aren't really raking in the new players. You know, there's not like a ton of new people signing up to play that have never played a MOBA before. They're almost always, you know, it's already a, a consistent huge game just because the players that are playing it are playing it. <clears throat> so I think with MOBAs in general, it's just like it's already a steep learning curve. And since none of these games are really capturing the ability to teach new players, I, I just don't think that there, there's anyone, unless someone figures that out, unless a, a one of these new new teams figures out how to crack the learning curve, I don't know if any of them would that, are going to really break it. They, they were, it would need, it would need like a, a lot of major creators willing to spend a lot of time in it because we we've seen games will flame high um you know hood for example they got shroud they got lyric they got a bunch of these huge creators and it went boom through the roof it was huge everybody loved this game and then what a month later it's in it's in the in the dog toilet like it's just so it, it, it's it's yeah, man, I don't, I, I don't know if there is anything they can do, which, which sucks. I, I Overprime was so fun. Like, I really, really liked Overprime. Um, I, to be honest, uh, as far as like predecessor, you guys saying that it's the closest to Paragon, that actually probably kind of puts me off. Part of the reason why I'm one of those players that stopped playing Paragon was because I just wasn't having fun in those super sweaty lobbies and games that were going thirty to forty five minutes and people who were toxic and talk, you know, and it was difficult to get people to get on board to just do minor things like you know show up for objectives and stuff it was frustrating it was annoying it was hard you know and i couldn't convince other people to jump on and play because of those exact reasons it's confusing and hard so i i don't know you could be right with ethereal being able to crack that because it's definitely not paragon it's a whole other type of game and if they do it well which they have the opportunity to i suppose over you know as they continue to work towards it they could crack in and make something that feels so different that it'll still keep the people who are interested in Paragon and have been following along. I think we'll give it a try and they'll be excited to try it. Um, but it could also crack into a whole new player base that never even knew they wanted to play a game like this, which is exciting for them. But um, I don't know if Predecessor or even Overprime realistically have to do that unless it's in a market um, that hasn't really been tapped yet. At least that's my opinion. Well, I like that you bring up Hood. Because the, the, what happened with Hood, that's what happened with Fault. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm afraid is going to happen with both Predecessor and Overprime. And we've even seen it during their free weekends. Like, the first day, huge spike of people. The next day, 
like a third of those people are, are still playing. Mm-hmm. Um, like we definitely saw that with uh, Overprime having like their 11 day closed beta test. Not so much with Predecessor, but I think that we would probably see the same trend with Predecessor since we did see a pretty steep drop off between their initial day and the final day. But um, that, I'm, I'm just very concerned about that. I, like I said, I think it might be too late. There's most of the Paragon community has moved along. I see I, that's another thing. I see comments all the time. People are like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't care about Paragon anymore. Like, like it was a fun game and I remember it fondly, but I've moved on to other games, you know? Um, There's an aspect of it of like aging out. And I don't mean that like there are certain ages that like if you don't fit in this age range, you shouldn't be caring about Paragon, right? <laughs> um, But I think it's it's right for me. I think about Paragon very differently now than I did when it was at, when it was around, right? I was 19 in college, right? Die hard Paragon player, right? Played it to hell and back. And, but I didn't have a full-time job, right? And so it's this <laughs> now, now thinking about Paragon now and even just games in general, it's True. different. And I feel that there's, there's a, a, with Paragon being gone and none of these games having captured that market again, captured that essence fault being out for two years even still it's it almost feels like i've i've aged to a point where it's like i can't connect in the same way with those games anymore that it's and it's not i don't even know how to describe it like it just feels like it's time to move on like it's not a bad thing necessarily it's just one of those things that it was great while it lasted but here we are now i mean i'm still looking forward to them like oh I, I obviously yeah don't get me wrong but it's but I, I think the greater the community the yeah and I, and I think too like you you mentioned ages like you know different periods of time people are looking for different things I think we've moved away from the ultra realistic people mm-hmm. wanting like ultra realistic graphics in games because that's what brought a lot of people into Paragon was how really beautiful and ultra realistic it looked uh it's more it's like more like a cell shaded people want like people want a game to just have its own art style and then enjoy that art style now. And it, people, it's, it's kind of gone away from that. Um, so when they see like a Paragon like game, they're not as excited about it as something like V rising where it's not, it's, it's a cool art style, but it's certainly not photorealistic or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I think Hood's a prime example. Fault is even an example in the, in the community, in the Paragon community is having diehards is not enough. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And, it's almost a Hood, detriment. Hood is a huge example of that, right? Mangus, you and I know a guy that plays Hood on a weekly basis still it, to this day. No, Raven stopped playing. But so, but even so, that shows then even more. Yeah, he was right? he was playing yeah. weekly for almost a year with only ten players online. That he would have to coordinate lobbies with nine other players in order to get or with seven other players to get people online. Right, like that's not enough to keep a game alive. You have to do more than. And and hopefully Fault gets to that point when they start their marketing push, right? And any of these games, honestly. But like you said, we saw with the Overprime eleven day test, they went down from fifteen thousand to like four thousand, or less than a third of their players at peak timing, and it was just a gradual decline the entire test. Predecessor, it was slightly more consistent in the higher numbers, but that's because it was a shorter amount of time. And so it's it's a hard thing that they're going to have to find a way around in some capacity. I I like to root for Fault because I think they've done great things. I think Strange Matter has done as much shit as I gave them when they first came out. Like, I think they've done great things, and I'm amazed at how much they've been able to do with the tiny-ass little player base, which can't be that much money coming in for them. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at how much they've been able to do. However, I, 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 I just want to be very open and honest. Fault has failed. Like, they... <laughs> That game's it's it's pretty much done. Um, there, there there's gonna it's gonna take something major for Fault to come back online because when Predecessor does come out, the, the Fault players are just gonna go play Predecessor, um, and they all admit to it. They yeah, all they they all say it. They say it on stream. For over Prime. Um, like you got Bearded, who's like hardcore Fault, and he he would never say that, and he, and he 100 means it. Like Bearded loves loves Fault. Like you 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 will have a handful that will stick with Fault, but. For the most part, they're just waiting for predecessor, and uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate because I think what, the same thing that happened with Fault is probably going to happen with predecessor. People are going to be like, 
the Paragon nostalgia for like a couple weeks, and then it's just going to keep falling and falling and falling mm-hmm. until they have a player base that's just toxic as fuck and are hardcore players that are just beating the shit out of anybody new that tries to come in and play. Like it's it's going to be a rough road. Um, I'm like that's why I wanted to have this conversation tonight because I'm I'm really starting to lose a little bit of faith. <laughs> I'm still interested to see what happens. I'm still really looking forward to playing all the games, but. Man, I'm I'm starting to starting to lose the faith a little bit, and I think I I speak for all of us, but stop me if I don't. I I think we want to be wrong about this. Yeah, right? 100%. I certainly do. I I I want Fall to go free to play and get a million players. Right, Real, realistically, it's not going to happen. But but still, the idea, right? I want them to be successful. I want them to go out and crush numbers. I want Predecessor to come out and be a competitor to that. I want Overprime to come out and be and be a competitor to those things. Right, because competition breeds innovation right and makes mm-hmm. all of the games better and will make them better and force them to be better to to compete i think that's a great thing but i i hope we're wrong that that, that they're not going to decline like that but i don't feel like we are i, I mean I, I completely agree with with both of you uh i i mean one i guess separate point and you guys have kind of touched on it to me it's it's also just as much the responsibility of the communities like Fault, in my opinion, has done nothing egregiously wrong, right? They're not, like, you know, doing anything terrible or, you know, giving a big, like, F you to their their player base or anything. Like that. They've been, since release, in my opinion, now I'm not, like, a crazy Fault follower, but I've watched and seen the updates come through because I have it still in my folder. They're trying. Like, they're putting out new content. They're listening to the players that are playing. The, but, I mean, for me, when I go into, like, reading reviews... A new player with a few hours on will say, I got into a lobby, people were talking mean, or they were saying this, or I wasn't playing optimally, and they weren't doing this, and you end up with this this toxic fan base, and I think that, in in my opinion, Paragon, old school guys who are continuing to try and find the Paragon Reborn, are treating new players and new communities like garbage. I know in our comments and a few of our other videos that we've done, I have talked about that exact same thing. Oh, this is just a redo of this, and that was terrible. No, 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 no. I didn't like that because it's just like this, and I hated that. Like, dude, they have to do something. They have to do something different. They have to try and innovate. They have to, and you as a community member, if you want to play a game like this, you you, you got to, like, be supportive of those players that are coming in. I mean, when we were playing Overprime and you had all those people just flaming new players and talking, like, shit and being just rude, and it's like, bro, this is... This is a play test. These are all like the numbers look good. Like we want people here. Why are you trying to actively discourage people from playing the game by being rude to them? And, and I, it just drives me nuts. Like if you guys who are hopefully watching this video, you want one of your favorite games to succeed, be an ambassador for it. Stop treating new players. Stop going into comments of every video that you see talking about Paragon successors and talking shit about the game that you didn't like in the version that you didn't like. Be more proactive in a positive nature and create the change that you want to see in this gaming space because otherwise it's not going to happen. It's they're, they're, The money's going to run out. That they're gonna these businesses are gonna have a hard time justifying continuing to invest in these servers and innovation and patches, all that stuff. Again, to Mangus's point, the fact that Fault has still managed to put out content with the player base as it is, 150 to 200 players, it's, it's, any anybody else would have just dropped it. They would have just oh, yeah. been like, it doesn't work. It, it's too expensive to keep this running. We're just gonna let it go. But they've been trying. So I guess that's my I mean final point because you guys have made great points. I think as far as whether or not they can really recover, I don't know, but something has to change within the communities too. Um, you, you, these these predecessor fanboys, like I mean, obviously you guys want your game to succeed, but you know, there's no guarantee that it's going to. So stop shitting on fault and stop shitting on overprime because those are games that could potentially do just as good. Be an active participant. Ask for the changes you want to see. Don't shit on the new players. You know, try and help players. Like help each other. I, I, that's just. Something that, that to me has, I think, been a big driving force of why so many people just leave. They're just like, I don't want to deal with this. I've got other games I can play that aren't going to treat me like garbage, especially <laughs> in an online game. I, I, think, I think, um, well, <clears throat> well, something that you, you sort of implied, but as as Jedi alluded to, like it's not it's not just um predecessor fanboys. It's like overprime fanboys do the same sure. thing to predecessor. Absolutely. Fault fanboys do the same thing to predecessor and overprime. It's but like I, I like what you said, be an ambassador. Be an ambassador, but don't be a white knight. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. It's true. It's sure as fuck. Don't, just don't be a troll. Just because. And just 
Yeah. Something I've said before is high tide raises all ships, right? And that applies across games, honestly. Because if mm-hmm. you are supportive of, like, I mean, all, us, honestly, we've talked about Fault, Overprime, and Predecessor, and, and are bringing awareness to all three, right? If you're supporting all the games, again, it makes them compete with each other. It makes them be better. And at the end of the day, the best game is going to come out and be the one that survives, right? Because we've talked about before, at at best, maybe you get two of these games to survive, but there's no way all three make it through there. Right. And so you should want all of these games to be the best that they absolutely can. You should want all of these games to have as many players as they possibly can. Because at the end of the day, whichever one succeeds or whichever two succeed will be better for it. And that's more important than going out there and shitting on one of these other games because you don't like how their mechanics work or you don't like the other players or you whatever whatever the thing is. Right, you want, should want all of these games to be better, so they can make your favorite be even better than it already is. And I, I think right now, I think Predecessor has the best game, in my personal opinion. However, mm-hmm. I think Overprime has far more of a chance of eventual success than Predecessor does, just because it is so wildly different from Paragon, and it's very fast paced, and it's more of what the the greater community wants in a in a video game. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that for me, that was why I liked Overprime so much. Like, it was it, exactly those things. Like, I mean, I don't think I put this. I think in the play test, I put more hours in Overprime than I put in all of Fault. Um, so, because it, 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 it was, it was. I mean, it rewarded me for the time that I felt like investing in it. You know what I mean? And in a current gaming sphere where you know there's a lot of titles. You know, there's only so many hours in a day. And I think for, you know, us, as we get older and you find that you have less time to do said gaming, you know, you're you're going to start being picky and choosy with which games you're going to play. I will always probably still keep League of Legends on my computer. Why? Because I can pick it up. I can play a few games in like 30 minutes and, and be happy and then not pick it up again for another month or two. I feel like I could do that same thing with Overprime. I don't feel like I could do it with Fault, and if Predecessor is similar as it was to Paragon, then I'm going to feel like I'm always behind. Like, I'm never going to feel like I can jump in and feel like I can make, like, you know, get caught up because it's like, oh, the meta shifted so drastically this way, and it's so sweaty, and it's so competitive, and it's this, and there's no fun game modes, so you can only play the sweaty, aggressive, you know, game, and it's going to be a 30 to 45 minute grind fest where you're trying to learn everything, and people are, you know, so, yeah, Overprime was... I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we need them at nine or ten minute games, but, <laughs> <you know? laughs> but they're going to fix. That's definitely going to get fixed. <laughs> but, you know, I liked the speed of it. I liked travel mode. I liked it. I like I mean, I know that those were things that we didn't like in Paragon. I get that. But this isn't Paragon. And I don't think it should be held to those same standards of Paragon. Like in travel mode in this game, to me, felt good because you wanted to get out there and be active in the map. You wanted to be able to get from lane to lane and feel your presence and you know, with the portals being on the side, they want activity, they want movement, and and uh, and I liked that at least for for me as far as like of the three that I think I would play, I'm leaning more towards Overprime just because of the speed of it all, and hopefully there's some aspects of being able to add in more strategy and make it more competitive and all that stuff while keeping some of the fast paced fun aspects of it. I think Ethereal, I think they have a really good shot at actually becoming successful, but. Like in the in your marketing jelly, you guys are gonna have to like let people know right up front that this is a complicated MOBA that they're gonna have to put time into learning. Like if people think that because people do come into it thinking it's gonna be a pick up and play, that it's gonna be that if they know how to play Paragon, that they can play Ethereal. But God damn it, it is not. It is a very complicated mm-hmm. MOBA. So yeah, mm-hmm. but you were you that way, Jedi? <laughs> Yeah, oh, 100%. And I think I told that to Jelly when he brought me in as a tester, uh, you know, a few months ago. Like, when I got in there, I was like, oh, dude, this will be easy. I, you know, I played all kinds of MOBAs. I played Paragon. I played Fault recently. Like, it'll be fine. No. Like, I mean, it, it's got <laughs> some very, it's got some parts. Like, yes, you kill minions. Yes, you buy items. But, oh, boy, it's it's a whole beast into itself. It's actually, to me, I felt, I feel like it's got a lot more RPG elements to it, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, the way that the buffs are set up, the jungle is set up, like all those things feel a lot more PVE and PVP oriented, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I agree with the learning curve. Again, the, I think a team, the team that comes up with a good way of creating like a really solid 
fun tutorial to teach new players and you know players that have maybe played MOBAs before the concepts that they're going to need for their game, especially a game maybe like Ethereal. Oh man, that could be huge because Ethereal's got some really cool stuff. Like they do. Like it's you bring up the, the tutorial is actually what I was about to get into as well. Is the, the tutorial and the way the marketing is set up are the two legs they're going to prop up Ethereal. Yes. And if, without those both being successful, Ethereal is going to fall over. And there's no question about it. And and I know the team is very, very aware of that concept, right? And so it's it's you need to have the marketing in there so people have at least a toes dip of understanding of what they're getting into before they touch it. And then the tutorial has to take them the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. has to be able to show you press shift to fly when you're playing on a Sky Slayer. Sky Slayers have wings, whatever they're going to have, right? They, and then if you there are three lanes you can jump from fire lane down to void lane you can do these things it has to be honestly it probably has to be one of the most in-depth tutorials of any game or most games that i've seen what the heck that was weird <laughs> um randomly happened but of any game issues. that i've played in at least recent memory right it's going to have to be something it's going to have to be a games length tutorial where you go like i'm like i'm sorry but we got to get this information into you for you to understand how to get into this game. If you and, put and, a sense of humor into the narrator for the for the tutorial, I think that would help quite a bit. Guide people through it. <laughs> I mean, uh, to me, there, there's absolute opportunity uh, for creative uh, game developers to make a tutorial fun. Like, you can, you if you make the game tutorial a game into itself, like, and you add in the elements of gamifying it and, and introducing things in a... In a smart you know mentality i think that there's absolutely uh, an opportunity for it to be very very successful even in a very over-the-top complex game like ethereal is probably going to be uh i i definitely think it's possible but again it's going to require a lot of resources and time and hammering it down and i, I you know hopefully ethereal has the, the time and resources to be able to yeah. do that exact thing yeah i mean i think uh faults tutorial is a is a good example of what ethereal can't do i won't say it doesn't work for fault that's i'm not going to get into that but a false tutorial is a video the first time you load up the game that is just a hardcore info dump and that even knowing how the game works which partially turned me off of it in general i sat there and went please god let me skip this like let me out i cannot i'm not gonna sit here and just let you dump info on me well, I just have to sit here and take it. Like, that's not that's not engaging. That doesn't help me learn. And that could just be my learning style, right? But it's it needs to be something that you said. You need to be gamified. It needs to be fun. It needs to be engaging. It needs to be something that when, when you get into an actual game, you go, the tutorial told me if I jump and press shift, I can fly, right? Like, you need to intuitively remember what was taught to you. It can't just be a hard info dump or press Q. Oh, look, thing happened. Press E. Oh, look, thing happened, right? Like, it needs to be more than that. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, and I would even go, like, with UI stuff, like, you know, small overlay text saying, you know, that eventually after you've played enough times, it, it goes away, right? You can, Or you can even straight up just turn it off in the settings or something like that, like, turn off tutorial tips or whatever. I, I think anything like that to, to continue to, you know, I mean, over prime actually had, a, I think a pretty good job of like showcasing, like, you know, Hey, you pick this lane, this is where you're going. Um, you know, and explain some of the buffs. Like, you know, I thought that that was, that was pretty good. I mean, it still needs to be fleshed out a lot, but um, yeah, it, it, those, those types of things I think are just going to be that and finding the right creators when your game comes out to promote it. Um, I, I don't think you need to lean on your, your current, you know, fault creators, not that you shouldn't include them, absolutely include them, but I think they really do need to reach out and, and find some people from the League of Legends community, find people from the Smite community, find people from the Dota community and be like, hey, come and try this. This isn't League. This isn't Dota. This is a new game that's very much its own thing, but it kind of has some of those elements and it's fun and cool. And if they, I think, do that, like, I mean, I don't know who they would get, but, they, you know, there's an opportunity there. I think it could help. And that applies to any of these, not just Ethereal, but like uh, I think Ethereal has the opportunity with the new mechanics that are kind of coming into play to branch pretty far out and get some pretty decently sized communities to participate and get those eyeballs that need to be on the game for it to be successful. You you got cool, but they got cool heroes, and that's what's going to bring people in for mm -hmm. the most part, I think. I think it was with Bearded Mangoose, but we talked about... Uh, Fishing ponds, as an example. 
right? The, the the Paragon projects are all pulling from a smaller but more concentrated pond, mm-hmm. right? And so that they it's maybe easier to get fish at first, but at the end of the day, it will eventually run dry. Right. And whereas Ethereal kind of has that more broadened pond, but it's less condensed. So at the they can potentially go for longer, but they have to get enough to survive at first. Yeah. And so that's that's a a stark contrast between the Paragon successors and Ethereal in that regard. And and I and I think I said it for Ethereal, but I think it honestly it applies to all of them. The 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 two legs for them to stand on is gonna be marketing and tutorials. Mm -hmm. That's at the end of the day what it's gonna come down to. For them to to for any of them to make it in, in varying levels to be sure on both aspects, but those are the big the the cornerstones that they have to get right. And we've seen Fault has tutorial side kind of figured it out. They've got the co-op versus AI mode now, right? It's not hundred percent, but it's better. But their marketing sure. side suffers, and so they're they're leaning sideways, and you can you can definitively tell that. Right, predecessor, similar thing. You've got the the gameplay aspects there, but the marketing side. They're relying purely on Paragon refugees to come in there right now. Uh, but Overprime has a decent amount of both. That they're doing good outreach. They're doing. I mean, they got their trailer on IGN, for instance. Right, that's not hard to do, but that is a big step in a marketing side of things to get your game out in front of a different pond or to move your rod to a different pond. Right, like to go do these other things. And then they have their tutorial inside. And so they, they've got the most solid footing, I think, to go forward at the moment. And it shows. It shows with their numbers. Um, mm-hmm. They're not... Again, um, Overprime isn't nearly as popular in North America and Europe as, as Predecessor, but I think it's Asia. It's way, way more popular, I think. go to If you go to like South Korea and ask about Predecessor, nobody's going to know what the fuck you're talking about. You ask the community about over prime they're going to know exactly what you're talking about so i don't know i th- I think i've exhausted my uh <laughs> <laughs> what i wanted to talk about um do you guys have any final thoughts on the topic before we close it out for tonight um no i mean i guess the thing is is i don't want to leave on a sour note but like i mean i i i hope that it's not too far past I guess, like, you know, with your initial introduction on whether or not time is already past the, the opportunity, I'm hopeful that it's not. Like, I, I do think that there's an opportunity for a game like this or these types of games to exist in the gaming market. I, I, <laughs> what happened? I must have missed it. Uh, but I, I, and I want there to be one of those games. I don't know which one will succeed. Uh, I, of course, love it if they all got a huge boost. You know, I don't know, like, you know, the OTV guys decide to jump on Fault for some weird reason and start playing it. And it gets a huge boost like Among Us did, you know. Um, that it, Something like that would be super cool. I, I do think that there is an opportunity. The problem has been the reach out. Um, and other than the initial success of Paragon... I just don't know if any of these other games are are investing as much, I think, as they should in those two legs, as Jelly put it, in tutorial and marketing. Um, And so I I really hope it's not too far gone because I would love to get an opportunity to play one of these games on a bigger scale than they currently are. Jelly, any final comments? Uh, Tons. Um, (laughs) For all of you out there, Mangus and I are starting our own Paragon successor project. (laughs) We're calling it Etheragon. Okay, there we go. (laughs) No, I think I think we've kind of exhausted the well on this, right? It's it's definitely going to be a task. If I if I put odds on it, right, eighty twenty failure to success, right? That the the odds are against all of these projects. And it's going to be hard to overcome that, but it's not going to be impossible for them either, right? There, there is the chance. And then the more they do, the better those odds become for them, right? The, the, the better their marketing is, the more, the better their tutorial is, increase those odds, right? The better outreach to the, like a teleporting cat sometimes, man. Um, but I, I think that's the biggest takeaway. And like I said before, High tide raises all ships, right? Like yep. you, we we want all of these to succeed, so that if only one can succeed, it's the best it possibly can be going forward. It's really hard to, to keep <laughs> going with this while you've got Uno there. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. Mangus, we've said before, 
right? That in a year, in two years, how are we going to look back and think this is different, right? When core, when core and predecessor were the main two, right? Nobody thought that we'd be out here now with overprime and fault at the same time, right? right? Like it's, it's, it is ever adapting, ever changing, and could go any way from here, honestly. I think uh, any final thoughts I have, uh, I just had an idea while we were talking about Ethereal and the tutorial. I think you need to get uh, Claire Thomas, um, voice of Kalia, to do a, a, a stupidly violent tutorial <laughs> in, her, in her in her Kalia voice. Oh, God, that would be, that'd be great. One of anyway, what... my favorite. Yeah, members. I was going to say, <laughs> yes. that's what we got her to say. That's right. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, well, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this. We oh plugs, plugs. Uh, Viking, uh, you want to plug your YouTube or anything? Uh yeah. I mean, um, obviously, um, Beta Boys uh, has officially launched. Beta I think. Boys. Uh, let's Beta go. Male. Come on, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to be, um, I, I think we've got a, a few games lined up, um, of course, in the comments of, uh, either the video that we just put out, uh, more in this one, if you have ideas, uh, no matter what, I think it'll get to us. We would love to hear your suggestions. Um, I think we're going to try and do one on V rising. I think is the, the next one, um, possibly. Um, and then after that, you know, who knows? We'll see. But, uh, that's, that's all I got, man. It's been a lot of fun gaming with you boys. And Jelly? Uh, keep an eye out. 2030, Ethereum's going to come out. So we're, <laughs> we're going to start development right now. Um, we've got a couple years to go before it comes out, but you know, I'll be live streaming all of our development aspects. So Ethereum can be the best game it possibly could be. Uh, no, I, I will probably start streaming again. I've got a different setup. I did that so I can motivate myself to stream a little bit more. Um, so get back to streaming. I've been debating making YouTube content again. We'll see if I end up doing that. Yeah. Uh, but uh yeah i think that's it for me what about you mangoose i just gonna start my i'm gonna start a resurrection project for hood just like predecessor did for paragon <laughs> Tommy we'll was kind of doing that Colin Robin. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right before we get into that let's, <laughs> that is going to close the project all these projects need funding, by the way, guys. So uh, feel free, you know, start sending donations. And yeah, uh, theragon has got a uh, Twitter, a PayPal, <laughs> <laughs> nothing else. Um, <laughs> it's another project. Vegas, Agora. Bring up, this is FTM sixty nine, man. I'm it so proud. It is. Of you. It is. Ooh. Someone's gonna go back and count and be like, actually, the last one was sixty nine. This one's seventy. Yeah, probably. Mangus got it wrong. Yeah, nobody likes that probably guy. Got it wrong. <laughs> anyway, let's go close it out for this week. Appreciate uh appreciate you all coming out. Uh let us know down in the comments below what you think think about the possible success in the future of all these games. But for now, this is the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. <laughs> it's my thing. It's my thing. He did it all seductively though. He didn't shimmy the shoulders. He rolled them. He didn't even have like a finesse behind it, like man goo. Special shout out to channel members I Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.